<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on your husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Wow, there goes another mighty tree for those rugged lumberjacks to haul down Sergeant Preston's Yukon Trail. Just think if you were a lumberjack, what stamina it would take, what good nourishing breakfast you'd eat. Start now to build up your stamina with breakfasts that always include a heaping bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns gives you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And delicious, taste them. You just can't beat Quaker puff rice or Quaker puff wheat. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police entered the Mountie headquarters with the great dog Yukon King at his heels. Well, hello, Sergeant. When did you get into Dawson from Forty Mile? About an hour ago, Jim. You got here just in time to put up your dog team for the season, too, I guess, eh? Yes, the thaw came just about the time I left up there. Having an early spring this year. I'll be glad to get back in the saddle for a change. Mm. Is the inspector in his office? Yes, he's been waiting for you. It must be something important. He went to telegraph you. All right, I'll go on in. Wait here, King. Come in. Morning, Inspector. Ah, oh, good morning. You made good time, Sergeant. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Your message said to hurry back for a special assignment. That's right. I want you to start for Selkirk at once, Sergeant. Yes, sir. There have been several robberies in and around Selkirk. The most recent was a robbery at the express office, resulting in the murder of the night express clerk. I see. Constable Collins' report from Selkirk states that a small gang is responsible, but he's made no headway in running them down. He's asked for help and particularly requested that you be sent. I'll leave for Selkirk within the hour, Inspector. Good. You'll take King with you, of course. Well, that's right. I'd have a hard <laughs> time getting away without him, I'm afraid. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the one to try to hold him while you rode away. I'll telegraph the constable that you're on the way, Sergeant. I'll make the best time possible on the trip, sir. I'm sure you will. And I hope I won't have to wait long to hear that the guilty men have been taken into custody. Goodbye and good luck, Sergeant. Goodbye, Inspector. The ride to Selkirk from Dawson City was a long and tedious one, since the condition of the trail following the thaw was slushy and tended to hold the Mounties' horse to a slow pace. But finally, Sergeant Preston reined to a halt in front of the constable's office. Oh, Blanky. Steady, fella. <coughs> Come along, King. Go on in, boy. Sergeant Preston. Hey, I'm sure glad to see you again. Hello, Tom. We're glad to get here. Trail's better now, but it was in rather bad condition when we started. I can imagine. The inspector told me you were having trouble, Tom. Oh, trouble's right. About a month ago, a trapper came to town. Got cash for his furs and set out for Whitehorse. He hadn't gone far when he was overtaken by another dog sled. As they stopped alongside, he barely had time to notice that one of them rode the runners while there were two riding the sled. Because of their parka hoods and bandanas covering part of their faces, all I could see were their eyes. He was startled to see guns in the hands of the two on the sled. Hold up, eh? Yes. The man riding the runners stepped up to him without a word and slugged him on the head with a gun butt. When he came to, they were gone, and so was his cash. Came back here, reported the robbery. Meantime, it began to snow, and the trade of the crooks was covered. It was a bad break, Tom. I know. 
and a short time later, a prospector was in town after he'd made a strike at his claim. Carried quite a bit of gold, talked freely of having more at his cabin. At night, just as he entered his cabin, he was struck down in the dark. Got any clues that time? No. Got to town the next morning. Said his cabin was a shambles inside and all his gold gone. I went out there, but others had traveled the trail that morning, and it wasn't possible to pick up the trail of the crooks. What makes you think there was more than one crook that time? There were three sets of footprints along the side of the cabin to the window. That's how they got in. It could have been the same three. That's right. Then, just before the thaw came, the express office was robbed. They got a payroll shipment that was to go out the next morning to Beaver Creek Mining Company. They shot the clerk. The inspector told me the night express clerk had been murdered. Find anything that might help? I did find something, but it's no help. You see, the clerk, the clerk uh, slumped over his desk when he was shot. Guess the crooks left him for dead. But evidently, after they'd gone, he had enough life in him to try to print a message. I have it here. Letters are mighty shaky looking. It's easy to make out the words he managed to put down. What's it say? It says three of them. The leader may be. That's as far as he got. Three of them, the leader may be. Huh. Let me see that one. Sure, here it is. Thanks. Let us sort of run together toward the end. Yes. Yes, he was failing fast, poor chap. Evidently, he thought he recognized the leader. Too bad he didn't get a chance to put down the name he had in mind. I'll keep this a while, Tom. I want to study it. It's all right. I've stared at it until I'm blue in the face almost. This note's the only clue? Yes. Crime wasn't discovered for hours. Any trail he might have left in the street was wiped out by people going back and forth. Wish we'd been here when it happened. King could have picked up their scent. I know. Of course, a lot of people have gone in and out of the express office since then. Let's go to the cafe. Jim Hollis, the owner, may recall some strangers that were here during those robberies. Jim Hollis sold out after you left for Dawson last fall, Sergeant. Oh? The new owner's mighty friendly. You know, give us any help she can. She? Yeah, she's a widow. Uh, Mrs. Evans. About 30 or so. Rather rough-mannered, but not bad-looking. Very pleasant to talk to. All right, then. Let's go talk to Mrs. Evans. Come on, King. A short time later, the two Maltese and King entered the cafe. The constable led the way to the owner's office at the back and knocked. Who is it? Constable Collins. Well, what are you waiting for? Come on in. <laughs> Come on, Sergeant. Come along, King. Hey, Constable, where'd you get that fine-looking dog? Well, not to mention a mighty fine-looking Mountie, too. <laughs> Miss Evans, this is Sergeant Preston uh, and his dog, King. Glad to meet you, Sergeant. Thank you, Mrs. Evans. The Constable told me you'd be willing to help us with some information. Sure, help you if I can. Oh, why don't you both sit down? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sergeant, we're surprised to hear you taking over the cafe. Oh, nothing surprising in that, far as I can see. My husband ran a cafe in El Paso, Texas for a while. And then we went to Frisco, and he opened one there. When he was killed in a gun brawl, I sold out and come up here. I see. Maybe you can tell me if there have been any strangers around town during the past month or so. Well, no. I reckon I've seen a few who made overnight stops in town, but none that stayed around. We're not interested in men who are just passing through. Well, what are the... Strangers you're hunting look like, Sergeant. I can't say. <laughs> you mean you won't say? Oh, never mind. I'm not the curious type. Sergeant's here to help me find the three men who killed the express clerk, among other things. How do you know there were three? Well, the clerk lived long enough to print a note. That saying... uh, wouldn't interest Mrs. Evans, Constable. Oh, I suppose not. <laughs> Just forget what I said, Mrs. Evans. <laughs> sure thing, Constable. How long are you going to be in Selkirk, Sergeant? I'll be around for a while yet. Oh, good. <laughs> I bet your wife doesn't like the idea of a handsome hombre like you roaming around the country so much, does she? <clears throat> I'm not married, Mrs. Evans. Oh. You know, since I have a feeling we're going to be friends, you, you needn't be so formal with that Mrs. stuff. You can call me Maybell, Sergeant. <laughs> oh? <laughs> Sergeant, that's a privilege no other man in town's been given. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> really? Well, frankly, I'm glad you told me your first name. How's it spelled? Well, it used to be two names. May after my ma and Bell after her sister. But now I just run them together under one name. Maybell, eh? 
Hasn't anyone in town ever heard your first name? <laughs> well, sure. I reckon everybody knows it, but uh, I'm particular who uses it. Oh. I'm pleased to have you call me that, Sergeant. Mighty pleased. Well, thank you for the compliment. Well, Tom, we'd better be moving along. Well, goodbye. Bye. Bye. As soon as the two Maltys had gone from the building, Mrs. Evans went from her office to a secluded table in the back of the cafe. Two men looked up as she sat down. You saw the two Maltys? Yeah, we saw them all right, Miss Bell. Sid and me were wondering what they wanted. Yeah, what did they want? Well, the constable brought in that sergeant to meet me and get my help, so they said. That sergeant didn't just come here to pass the time of day meeting you, Maybell. What do you mean, Buck? He's Preston. Him and that dog of his are famous for solving crimes. Oh. Did he act suspicious at all, Maybell? No, but he asked about strangers being in town. Of course, Buck, you and Sid aren't strangers here. That's right, we aren't. If that bounty gets any kind of clue, he don't give up. Well, there is one thing, boys. A certain hombre scrawled some sort of note before he died. Constable was blurting it out, but Preston stopped him quick. Holy back from me. Down, Sid, take it easy. You don't see me getting excited, do you? I don't reckon anything upsets you. Instead of letting anything upset me, I'd do something about it pronto. Yeah? So what do we do? Oh, well, look. I figure if that note pointed at anybody, that tall sergeant would act right away. But he did. He came direct to see you. No, he didn't. Constable Collins brought him just to meet me, hoping to get help. <laughs> That young constable is susceptible to easy talk and nice smiles from a woman. But the sergeant, uh, gone him isn't. <laughs> Sounds like you were getting sweet about him. Forget it. Uh, he's sure some hombre, though. Maybell, for Pete's oh, sake. Stop if worrying, you're... will you? I know he's dynamite to all of us. Now, one of them has that note, and we gotta get it. Even if it means doing away with the one who's carrying it around. Even if it's Sergeant Preston himself. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You know, fellas and girls, now that April's here, it's getting to feel sort of springy. And I was thinking, say, as a matter of fact, let's open the window and enjoy that balmy breeze, huh? Ah, well, good heavens, look what just flew in. It has wings, but it isn't a bird. It's a little creature, a sprightly-looking little fellow. You hear it right. I'm a wood sprite. Well, you must be the fellow that goes around in the spring opening the leaf buds and spring flowers. But what are you doing here? I had an idea about Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Oh, you're interested in the breakfast cereal shot from guns. You bet I am. I eat a big bowl bowl every morning. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Say, Mr. Wood Sprite, you must go for wheat or rice shot from guns. Nothing better. Good for you, too. Especially for a busy fella like me. You mean because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nourishing and furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Right. Say, what was that idea of yours? It's a spring breakfast treat. You put Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice together in a cereal dish. Separate the two with fruit, add milk or cream, and mmm, mm. Say, there's a spring breakfast dish that opens up the taste buds. Why don't you fellas and girls try it real soon? And don't forget, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king-size premium grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Ask Mom right now to order delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns comes only in the big Quaker red and blue package with a sealed inner lining in order to doubly protect the flavor and crispness until it hits your table. That's why Quaker Pop Wheat or Quaker Pop Rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Ask Mom to please get both delicious kinds pronto. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston and the constable walked back toward the constable's office. 
Darkness was approaching, and as they reached the hitch rack where Preston's horse Blackie stood waiting, the sergeant spoke. Tom, it was a tiring trip from Dawson. If you don't mind, I'll go to your cabin instead of coming to the office. Blackie and King could both deal with food and rest, and so could I. Oh, sure. You go ahead, Sergeant. Make yourself at home. After you have a few hours sleep, we'll have another discussion. Meantime, I'll finish up some reports at the office. All right. You know, uh, I have sort of a crazy idea about the meaning of this note, Tom. Maybe because I'm so tired, I'm just reaching for a quick solution, but I'll tell you about it later. So long. Steady, fellow. <coughs> See you in a few hours, Sergeant. Right. Let's go, King. Get up, Blackie. <laughs> The constable's cabin was set off by itself at the edge of town. After taking care of his horse and feeding King, Preston flopped down on one of the two cots and fell into a deep sleep. Because of the stuffiness indoors, King stayed out in the shed with Blackie. For a while, the great dog dozed. And then he suddenly raised his head and listened as he heard the distant wailing cry of a lone timber wolf coming from the wooded area behind the shed. King got to his feet and stood for a moment listening. And then, with another low growl, he trotted off to investigate. A short time later, two cautious figures moved to the window of the cabin. By the light of a lamp on the table inside, they could see Sergeant Preston sleeping on the cot. He's in there sleeping, Buck. I don't see that dog around. I'll cover the mountie. You'll be ready to plug the dog the minute you see him. Right. Let's get to the door. Slowly and carefully, Sid tried the door and found it unlocked. He eased it open. Come on, he's sound asleep. I'll stand at the head of the cot in case he wakes up. You go through the pockets of his jacket and parka. Right. There's a jacket and parka hanging over there. Go search him. Okay. While Buck went to look for the note, Sid moved stealthily to the head of the cot and stood watching the sleeping Mountie. A few moments later, Buck spoke out cautiously. I found it, Sid. Now I'll... Ooh, oh. what? what was that? Oh. As the Mountie started to rise, Sid, lifting his gun, brought the butt of it down in a glancing blow on the back of Preston's head. Yeah, that put him out like a light. Let's get away from here quick. Right. A short time later, Sid and Buck hurriedly entered Mrs. Evans' office at the cafe. Well, how'd you make out? We got the note. Give it to her, Buck. Yeah. yeah. Here it is. Did he get a look at either of you? No, he was sleeping. The dog wasn't there. I socked him with my gun butt as he woke up. <laughs> He's out cold now. <laughs> when the news gets out, I'll, I'll go to sympathize with him and to offer my services as a nurse. Well, let's see what's printed in the note. Three of them. The leader may be... Huh. Doesn't make sense. That clerk couldn't have recognized you, May Bill. Those men's clothes... With a bandana to hide your face. That's right. He had an idea that maybe the leader was someone he knew, that's all. Well, it's a good thing there are steps from this office to the upstairs. You won't have to go out front. Now, Bosey, you better go up to your room and stay there in case the constable comes asking questions in the cafe later. Yeah, one of us might make a slip. We're there in the cafe and he does come in. <laughs> I don't think the sergeant will be around for a day or two after Saki got You didn't... You didn't kill him, did you? I don't think so. What if we did Nobody could prove anything against us. Well, let's go, Buck. Right. Let's stay up in the room the rest of the evening. About half an hour later, Sergeant Preston was aroused into consciousness by the sound of the great dog king barking and scratching at the door. No. Oh, my head. Slowly, the Mountie sat up and then staggered to the door. King. Where were you, boy? Somebody came into the cabin. Oh, I have to sit down a minute. There, that's better. Why'd you let anyone come in, fella? If that blow had landed solidly, I'd have been killed. Feel better now. I got some water and bandage after I rest a bit. You must have been sleeping soundly, boy. I never knew you'd let anyone prowl around before. Here comes Tom King. <laughs> matter? How'd you get that cut on your head? I can't say, Tom. I was sound asleep. Something wakened me. The start to get up, I was hit. That's all I know. 
I can't figure out how they got past King. He was just outside. Oh. Hey, look over there. Your jacket and Parker are on the floor, and that chair's overturned. That falling chair must have been what woke me up. Bring that jacket and Parker here, would you please? Sure. Here they are. Someone must have been searching for something. And Parker's ripped. Oh. That note, Tom. It's gone. Why would anyone go to all this trouble to get that? Who knew about it? Nobody but you and me. You spoke of it in front of Mrs. Evans, remember? Maybell Evans. Tom, that's the thought I've had before. That clerk might have been trying to write out the name Maybell. All he was able to get down was the M-A-Y-B-E, which we took to be the words May and B. Gosh. Doesn't seem possible that she could have... She was the only one who knew about that note outside of us. I'm convinced she's mixed up in this and in those other crimes. Help me bandage my head and then we'll get busy. Right away, sir. The constable quickly attended to Preston's wound. And then he spoke. Look, Sergeant, we can't accuse her or anyone else without... Proof. I'm calling on King to lead us to the person or persons who came here, Tom. Let's go outside and see if King can pick up the scent. Come on, King. Find them, King. Find them, boy. The intelligent dog understood what was expected of him. He sniffed it along the ground in front of the cabin... And then, catching a strong, fresh scent, he looked up and barked. He's got the scent, Tom. I'll get Blackie, and then we'll see where King leads us. The great dog, King, followed the scent left by Sid and Buck directly to the cafe. Oh, Blackie, who's oh, steady, fella? Gosh, the trail leads right to the cafe, all right. Yes, we'll go in. Come along, King. King was momentarily puzzled by the many men in the cafe. But after sniffing around, he finally stopped at the office door and whined. Oh, Mrs. Evans' office. Let's go in. What? Well, didn't expect to see you both back so soon. Why, say, what happened to your head, Sergeant? Can't you guess? <laughs> nope. Never was good at guessing. Hey, what's that dog standing at the foot of the stairs whining for? Maybe he's telling us we'll be interested in the upstairs, Maybell. We'll look around up there. No, you won't. Hold I... it, Maybell. Don't open that door. Oh, now. Now, look here, Sergeant. Isn't right for you to go snooping into my private quarters. Why, I don't know what's got into you. I thought maybe you came for a social visit and here you Picking. go. <laughs> Come from behind the desk, Maybell, and sit in this chair. Great day, what is this? Tom, I thought you were a good friend of mine. Why do you let this Monty pull a gun on me? Me, a lady. I said come and sit down, Maybell. <laughs> All right, I'm set. I was sort of hoping you and me could become close friends, Sergeant. In fact... Save I... your breath, Maybell. Watch her, King. <laughs> hey, don't let him hurt me. You'll be all right if you don't move or call out. Let's go, Tom. Right. Be quiet going up the stairs. Huh? I hear voices in that room. For a moment, the two Mounties stood close to the door, listening. Maybell didn't mind having a fist by next to that crazy note. Yeah. Now we've got a few stuff up here, Buck. Well, she's got the most mounted. This got to be satisfied. Two of them. Those are our men. Have your gun ready, Tom. Yeah, I'm ready. Now, let's go in and fast. Right. Hey, what's the idea? Preach, both of you. I'll preach you for fucking here. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, my arm. Give me that gun. Get back Wait, there. Wait, Tom. This will do for you. Oh, you have no right bother this to This will help. bother you plenty. Oh, good work, Sergeant. Thanks. Get up, you. Wait, I, I've had enough. Bring I... the other one down, Tom. He's wounded in the arm. Let's go. Now, no, listen, Sergeant. I... Shut I up, you. Have... Keep going. My bell. What's all this about? Don't worry, Sid. We have our lawful rights. They have nothing against either of you. Oh, yes, we have. Keep them covered, Tom. I'll look in this desk. Huh? Here's the note they took. Some pokes of gold. Also an empty canvas sack. Uh, those are pokes of gold taken from the express office, all right, Sergeant. And each poke has the owner's name on it. That canvas sack's the one the mining money was in. Here are the members of the gang you were hunting, Tom. The note said there were three, and it started to name the leader as Maybell. Oh, wait a minute. You can't connect me Outside to this. Outside of the constable and me, Maybell, you were the only other person to know that note. You sent these two men after it tonight. Oh, no, no. 
They worked on their own. I did mention the note to them, but they're the ones you want. They had access to this office and planted those folks in my desk. She's lying. She knows it. She made all the plans. Help us pull each job. Oh, please, Sergeant, don't believe them. I'm a poor defense. Shed your tears for the clerk you helped murder, Maybell. I arrest the three of you in the name of the Queen. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Listen, fellas and girls, think of the fun of having models of a real Yukon lumber camp. Well, don't waste a minute. They're yours at no extra cost on the special Yukon trail packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Yes, there are eight different packages with exciting models of a lumber camp plus Sergeant Preston's own cabin, his team of huskies, the White Horse Jail, and a Yukon riverboat with a paddle that actually turns. And even scenery, the Klondike Mountain and Forest. There are 59 larger, easier-to-build models in all. Why, it's like Sergeant Preston's Yukon Trail appearing right before your eyes. So get going. Build your complete Yukon Trail right away. Remember, they're yours now without it costing you a single extra penny. You get them right on packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. And only on the original, crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. Act fast. Get them at your grocer's now. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the two bullets. While in Selkirk, King and I went with the constable to investigate a murder. We found the victim's young brother at the cabin... He sat staring at the body, and on a table nearby, there was a gun with one bullet fired. We thought he was the murderer. But later developments cast suspicion elsewhere. Investigating further, we rode into an ambush, and King fell as he rushed toward the ready gun of the killer. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises... Directed by Fred Flowerday and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long.